before the game even begins, as a good general, you should understand the battlefield. Okay, so we say that the chessboard is the battlefield. These 64 squares are where we will make our mistakes. Well, it's also where we'll make our good moves. So we should understand the battlefield before the game begins, before the game. And we should understand, as a good general, where to place our pieces. Now, I was, I, I was watching you guys play, and you guys were not paying attention to the center. So you guys were playing on the sides, back here, down here, but not in the center. So why is the center important? because our pieces are most powerful when they're in the center. Let's imagine the starting position. At the start, we have a bishop on c1. We also have a bishop on f1, but I just wanted to put this for demonstration purposes. So at the start of the game, the white bishop is on c1 square, and we like to say that you have your army, I have my army. We're going to draw an equator between the fourth and fifth rank, and I'm going to say, I have my space, you have your space. These 32 squares, they belong to white. These 32 squares, they belong to black. This bishop on c1 attacks two of black squares, h6 and g5. You see that? Now. We say, or rather I'm saying, the bishop is worth two in the space count because it attacks two squares. If we could move the bishop to a square where it would be more effective, that is to say the space count would increase, where could we move it? Try, yes, young man, where? Yes, yes. E3. E3, an excellent, excellent move. When we move to the square e3, we attack g5, h6, that's two, c5, b6, a7. Those are three squares. So now your bishop has become more effective. It now controls five of my, attacks five of my squares. A moment ago, it only attacked two. That was an excellent move. Now, at the moment, the bishop attacks five. Let's imagine that the bishop moves to the square c5. A moment ago, you were on your side of the equator. Now you crossed. You're now in my territory. Now, how many squares does the bishop attack? Five. Still five. OK, pretty good. We're going to go. Deep, wow, really deep into black's territory. And now how many squares does the bishop attack? And then one, f8, f6, g5, d8. Ooh, the bishop became more effective inside my territory. If we move the bishop, let's say, uh, here and here, now how many squares does it attack? Are you? Still, Still six. D8, B8, B6, A5, D6, E5. We don't say that the bishop attacks C7 because it's occupying C7. The bishop can't commit suicide. It's not attacking itself. It's only attacking those other squares. So we've investigated and we discovered that the bishop can attack six squares. Is it possible that the, is there a square on the board where the bishop can attack seven? Seven, do you know? Come and show me where, put this on the board. Seven, bravo, excellent. So the bishop, we say the bishop on d4 is on a prime square, that's square the bishop is at its most effective because it attacks c5, b6, a7, e5, f6, 
G7, H8, 7. Okay. If I had a light square bishop, and the bishop was on f1, on f1 the bishop attacks two squares, b5 and a6. What square should this light square bishop go to so that it also attacks seven? Young man, same, same principle, right? Bishop e4, bravo, bravo. Do you notice that these bishops are in the center of the board? Okay. When we say center, what grandmasters are referring to are the squares c3 to f3, f3 to f6, f6 to c6, c6 back to c3. These 16 squares are the center. These four squares, e4, d4, d5, and e5, call the sweet center. They're the best squares. And in this case, the best squares for the bishop are e4 and d4. Very, very simple. But it goes to show how important the center is. Let's take the knight on b1. At this exact moment, with a knight on b1, does it attack any of my space? No. If we move the knight to the side on a3, how many squares do you attack of mine? One. If we move the knight to the center, c3, remember, these are the squares of the center, how many squares do you attack of mine? Young man. Okay. Now, if we move the knight not into my territory, we're on the equator, you're still on your side, you're on the equator, but we're on the square e4, now how many squares do you attack of mine? Young man. Four, pretty good. We'll go back a moment. So when we move the knight here, you attack four of my squares. Let's say you cross the equator. Now you're just still on the edge of the equator, but you're on my territory. Now how many, Aryan? Four. Four, okay. Aryan. And I think I know the best square for the knight. Show me, come and show me the best square for the knight. The best square for the knight. What's the best square? Bravo. I'll give you another knight. Show me another best square. <laughs> Bravo. I got it. No, I don't. <laughs> Pretty good. Okay. Correct. Arjan is correct. He put the knights on two. There's actually four best squares. F6, E6, D6, and C6. Let's try to understand why for a second. When you put the knight on F6, how many squares does the knight attack? Young man. Correct. And how many squares of mine does the knight attack? No. That's not correct. So the knight at its most maximum, when it's the most powerful it could possibly be, can attack eight squares. That's the most. But in my territory, the most it could attack is six. This knight on f6 attacks g8, e8, d7, h7. Those four squares, as well as d5 and h5. So that attacks six. In your territory, it attacks e4 and g4. In fact, there are a lot of squares in my territory where your knight attacks six. If you were on c7, it would be these two squares, these two squares, and these two squares. So you would attack six squares in my territory, but it's not at its maximum. The knight could be at eight. When the knight is on the d6 square, it's at its maximum. It attacks eight squares. c8, e8, b7, f7, f5, e4, b5, c4. But it also attacks six of my territories. So these, so we would say that these four squares, c6, d6, e6, and f6, are the best squares for your knight. 
Now, when you're black, it's just the mirror reverse. But again, notice, I'm going to put the knights here. They're in the center. They're in the center. I can't emphasize this enough. They're in the center. They're controlling the maximum of squares. So as a good general, before the game begins, you should know the best squares for your pieces. Center, center. Now, I'm going to throw you a curve. No, not yet. I won't throw you a curveball. I'm going to take your queen. From the starting position, your queen is on d1. How many squares does it attack of mine? Six. Six. I count five. <laughs> okay, so from the starting position, your queen attacks five of my territory. I want somebody to come up to the board and put the queen on a more active square. Yes, young lady, you do it. Let's see if you can find a better square for the queen where it attacks more of my squares. Okay, very good. Thank you. The queen on d3. <coughs> How many squares does the queen, at a moment ago, attack five? The queen on d3 now attacks one, two, three, four. That's four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Pretty good. You improved it by four. Mm -hmm. Can you improve it some more? Young man, yes. Okay, let's put it right there. Very good. So what, go ahead, take a seat. So what you did is you brought the queen just across the equator. Okay, if you had put it on this square, you would have been on your side. You crossed the equator. With the queen on d5, could somebody tell me how many squares the queen attacks? Young man, how many? Nine. Are you sure? Of your squares. Yes, of my space. I'll be black. How many squares in my space does the queen attack? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 16. Okay, let's say you play this move. Now how many squares does your queen attack? Are you? 13. Correct. So the number of squares that your queen attacked went down. When you moved your queen out of the center, the number of squares, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Your queen went down. A moment ago, control 16. Now it controls left. How many squares do I have in my territory? How many squares? Arjun. 16 is how many of 32? Half, half. Half. Wow. So your queen alone could control half my territory. That's a lot. Now, I'm going to take the rooks. Eh? The rook on the starting position, how many squares does the rook attack of my territory? Young man. Four. I mean, yeah, four. Four. Okay. I need somebody to come and put my rook into a more effective square. Young man, you're going to do it for us. Thank you so much. I'm, thank you. I'm very grateful that you, you chose a central square. How many squares did the rook attack? How many? Young man. Ten. D6, D7, D8 square, that's three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The rook does not attack the square it's occupying. It can't commit suicide either. So the rook attacks 10 in the center of the board. So it sort of attacks 11 because it's on the square that it is. So it takes, you know, yeah. it takes 
it will take a, a, a piece we'll have to capture. But the rook attacks 10. Now, if I move the rook, let's say, from to this square, f5, and to this square, f6, how many squares in my territory does it attack? Nine. nine. How many agree with that, that that's nine? How many think it's still 10? Do you think it's 10? No. No? Are you? 10. 10. Let's count. F7, F8, F5. 1, 2, 3. G6, H6, E6, D6, C6, V6, A6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. <gasps> We just discovered something about the rook. Let's say I move the rook to f7 and to g7. How many squares does it attack? And then? 10. 10. How about if I move the rook to b7 and b8? How many does it attack? Young man. Um. Correct. So the rook, as a, gen as a good general of our army, we just discovered something about the rook. It doesn't matter in what square in my territory it is, the rook is most effective on any square of my territory. The bishops needed to be here, the knights needed to be on these four squares, but the rook can go anywhere. The queen needed to be centralized. Ah, so as a good general of our army, we understand that the rooks can be anywhere in my camp. Now, if the rook could occupy 10 squares, or attack 10 squares, and this rook attacks 10, how many in total? 20. 20. Yeah. And once again, the queen could attack how many squares? 32. I mean, 16. 16. So, if the queen can only attack 16, and the two rooks can attack 20, is it fair to say that two rooks are more powerful than one queen? And they're also worth more. Yes. Yeah. And that's where the point count comes in. How much is the rook worth? Five. And two rooks? Ten. Nine. And the queen? Nine. nine. So, the I'll two I'll rooks. Put my queen in there. Or two rooks. So, so we would say in the point count that two rooks are more powerful than the queen. But now here's a funny one. Think about this for, this for a second. These two bishops attack how many squares? Yes. Aryan. Correct. The two bishops attack 14 of white squares. How much is one bishop worth? Three points. How much are two bishops worth? Three points. Together. Six. six. Correct. So the two bishops are worth six. Now, you should know where the knights and the bishops want to go. OK. These are the best squares for the knights and bishops. Just before you even begin the game, you should have it in your mind that on a really good day, this would be wonderful position to have. Note the geometry. Does this bishop on d4 protect this knight on f6? Yeah. Does this knight on f6 protect the bishop on e4? Young lady, yes or no? Yes or no? It's your turn? Yes? Yeah. yeah. Correct. Does this knight on c6 protect the bishop on d4? Young man. Um, yes. And? Everything's protected. Now, if we took the two rooks, we know they could go anywhere on the chessboard. They could go, pardon me, anywhere in my camp, and they'd be really, really effective. Let's put them here. Do you notice the geometry? They're not as good as, wait, why would they go there if they're not protected? 
they're not protected. So this rook on d7 protects this rook on e7. This rook on e7 protects this rook on d7. Does anything besides this rook protect the yeah. knights also? Oh. And do the rooks protect the bishops? Yeah. Okay, that's a nice picture, right? That's a nice geometry. Now, if we were going to take the queen, remember when we put the queen, what would be good square for the queen? Young man. Um, d5. Excellent. And one other. Um, e5. E5. You see this geometry. The queen is very powerful. The rooks are very powerful. The knights, everything is supporting each other. Notice that it's all happening in the center, in the center. So I saw some of the games when you guys were playing at the start. It was like you guys weren't paying attention to the center. Once you start to realize that your, queen, your pieces are the most effective when they're in the center, you'll start to learn to control the center. Your games, your results are going to improve tremendously, tremendously. Ah. I got another quick question for you. Actually, this is a bit of a tricky one. I just want to ask you guys this. Okay, you're king. <clears throat> How many points is the king worth? Young man. Oh, yeah. What's your? How many? That's pretty good, young lady. Priceless. Zero. Do you, what do you think the king's worth? Pick a number. Five. Okay. Let's think about this. Now, the bishop at its maximum can control how many squares? Seven. Seven. Ooh, the knight at its maximum can control how many squares? Six. Six is correct. You can attack eight, but you can control six. From the starting position, does white's king, what's the space count? Five. No, zero. Zero. I move the king up. One, two, three. I'm on the equator. I'm on the equator. How many, what's the space count for white's king? How many? Three. Correct. Now, I'm just about to, I'm thinking about it. I'm not sure which. Maybe this square, maybe this square. I'm going to cross the equator. I'll cross it on a sweet center square. And now, what's my space count? Four. Five. Are you? Five. Correct. C5, C6, D6, E6, E5. Five. Can the king move to a square where it's m more than five? Young man, what square? Um, either on the seventh or sixth row, anywhere. Anywhere. Uh, let's say I move here. What's my space count? Oh, yeah. Eight. Eight. What is my space count here? Five. Five. Was my king more effective in the center, center then on the side. Now, let's think about this. Let's have some fun. The king, at its maximum, controls eight squares. At its maximum, the bishop controls how many? Seven. The knight? Isn't the king more effective than the bishop or the knight? Yes! If the king can control eight squares and the bishop at its maximum controls seven, isn't the king more powerful than the bishop? Oh, no, because it's the object of the game. True, but we're just trying to get a value sense for a moment. Now, how many did we say the rook? I forget. Ten. 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 So, if the king can c only control at its maximum 8 and the rook can control 10, then the king shouldn't be worth 5, right? Because the rook controls more. But shouldn't the king be worth more than 3? Because it would be... It's 4. 
So a lot of grandmasters say the king is priceless. It cannot, you cannot trade it for anything, but at a certain times, the king can be more powerful than the bishop and can be more powerful than the knight, but not as, especially in the end, but not as powerful as the rook. Ah, so these are ideas that you, as the general of the army, before you start the game, should have in mind. Control the center. Think about the best squares for your pieces, and then put them there. <laughs>